Launching a podcast is one thing, but standing out from the crowd and cutting out all of the noise is another. And in this short video, I'm going to share with you my top tips on how you can take your podcast from here right up to there. My name is Rob Spence, the Managing Director of a multi-award winning sales and marketing agency called Paragon Sales Solutions. Not only that, I'm the better host of a podcast called the How I Failed in Business Podcast. And I'm going to share with you my top tips on how you can take your podcast to the next level. If you have launched a podcast, then a massive congratulations to you. As you would have seen in an earlier video, and if you've not seen it yet, do go check it out, where we discussed how building a podcast is perhaps one of the best things you can do for your marketing strategy in 2024 and beyond. Having a podcast is one thing. There are so many podcasts being launched, you know, day by day, hour by hour, and I have no doubt that you actually want more than one listener, okay? You want to take that to the next level. And so the first things first, we need to make sure that you define your audience and your niche. Once again, if you have a little bit of market research, competitor research, if you scroll through Spotify, Apple Podcasts, you'll see a whole array of categories and you'll see a whole array of podcasts that all, all niche down to a certain genre, to a certain voice. My recommendation is this, don't try to please everyone. Don't try to appease everyone. Of course, you don't need to be truly strict on your category. But if you spread your net too wide, your audience won't know what you stand for. They won't know who you are. So if you are a football podcast, stick to football. If you're a business podcast, stick to business. If you're a comedy podcast, stick to business. Of course, the next thing is we need to make sure the content that you put out is actually good and funny. Now, of course, that comes down to two things. One, the podcast itself. It's just you and your mate sat around talking absolute nonsense about topics that only you and your friends know about and all those kind of personal jokes that you just had to be there for you're probably not going to get the same response. And if you're putting out content that is relevant to people, that people are engaged with, that can, you know, understand the stories that you are telling, okay? But secondly, when we put our marketing material out there to help promote the, the podcast, we've got to make sure that that content is good. Remember, the best radio presenters in the world talk to one person, and you should be doing that too on your podcast. Now, my biggest tip, and this is something where I failed in, is make sure you plan and prepare for your episodes. When we first started the How I Failed in Business podcast, there was no preparation, there was no planning, and put simply, that is how I failed. However, from learning, we've discovered that actually the more we put in, the more we pl plan, prepare, sort of organize our questions, understand the flow, the better the podcast became. It made my life simpler, it made the podcast easier, it made my co-host Sophia so much more relaxed at doing her job as well everything works so much better. So if you are interviewing a guest, make sure you plan and prepare, make sure you get some questions ready. But even if it's just you on your own or just it is just you and your friends or your colleagues, understand where you want the conversation to go, where you want the conversation to flow. Now, of course, you're going to want to promote your podcast. It's all well and good just having a podcast out there. Naturally, the algorithms on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube may push the podcast out, but you're going to need some help. So make sure that you promote it. Of course, it goes back down to the basic fundamentals of marketing. Could you think about putting together a website? Have you got your social media channels? Can you rely on influencers? Can you rely on getting guests on who can push their podcast out to their fans, to their followers and their engagers? Can you collaborate with other content creators? It's all well and good creating a product, but the more you talk about it and get others talking about it, the more it will go off and fly. Now, of course, if you're truly struggling with your sales and marketing strategy for your podcast, get in touch with our team here. Not only are we a multi-award sales and marketing agency, we've also launched our successful podcast as well, and we can help you just as well as we've helped ourselves. One of the quickest and most effective ways to grow a podcast is by building an engaging audience, by building that sense of community. The reason people will listen to your podcast and listen to your show, yes, it could be your jokes, yes, it could be the content, but it's because of that self, that feeling of, of, of worth and feeling that, that belonging. If you are developing that relationship with your listener, can we extend further? Can we use social media to engage with those audiences? Can we host Q&A sessions? Can we maybe put on a live show? Can we allow customers, to, uh, fans and listeners to write in, to phone in, to send their messages? Whatever it is, we need to make sure that we are engaging with our audience. If you look at any successful radio show, that's effectively all a podcast is. They are very good at getting people to call in, phone in, message in, and they read out messages. That's the reason they do it, because they make fans from their listeners. So what can you do to engage with your audience? Of course, without sounding too much of a nerd, you've got to track and measure your performance. Have a look at the analytics of your podcasts. Look at 
A, how many people are listening to it. Look at, of course, all the demographics of age, sex, gender, everything else in between. But look at drop-off rates. I was looking at some of our statistics recently, and I discovered that around 20% of our audience drop off after about eight minutes. So if we're losing 20% of our audience after eight minutes, what can we do around that eight-minute mark to try and keep them engaged? Can we add a special section? Can we organize a break? Can we organize some Q&As? Can we organize some customer engagement? For us, we're constantly looking at those demographics and those reports to see what can we do better. And that takes me on to my final point. Make sure that you are always trying to improve and evolve. I speak to dozens of people every week who go, Rob, I want to do videos. I want to create a podcast, but I just don't know where to start or I've not got everything set up the way I should. My idea is this, just start. Everyone has the capability to start a podcast. If you own a phone, you have the ability to start a podcast. Okay, yeah, of course, it won't be. You won't be out of this world quality-wise. You won't be on the same levels of diary of a CEO, but you continuously look for improvements. If you can improve every video, every podcast you put out by just 1%, by the time you've recorded 10 videos, you've improved on the initial video by 10%. So if you can always try and find ways to improve, then that is, that is all you can ever ask for. Now, of course, you may be asking, Rob, well, what can I improve on? Well, for me, the fundamentals are this. The content, so how are you saying things? What are you saying? Can you plan and prepare better? Can you improve your equipment? When we first started our podcast, we didn't have these. We just used, initially, a, a Yeti, a Yeti um, condenser mic, which perhaps wasn't the best of mic to be using. But did it do the job? It did a job. Have we now gone on to improve and invest? Absolutely. It's the same with these lights that are just off camera for you. Once again, when we first started creating content, these didn't exist. We used just ring lights and natural light. Same with this camera. When I very started, first started creating video, I just used a mobile phone. Don't think and don't wait for that perfect opportunity. Just continuously look for improvements. Now, look, I'll be honest, I've, I've caught the podcasting bug and I can share with you thousands of tips, thousands of pieces of advice on how you can start a podcast and how you can promote it effectively. But I don't have time today. If you'd like to carry on the conversation, I just ask of you three things. One, give this video a like. Two, hit the subscribe button. And three, leave a comment below. By leaving the comment below, myself or one of my team will get in touch with you. Maybe we can book in a call where we can help you with your podcast, where we can maybe produce your podcast for you, where we can maybe market your podcast for you. But I have no doubt that it, within this video, there is at least one tip that you can take away and implement today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Until next time, all the best.